Hi, I'm Rachel Coppolo, and this is 518 Faces. Today we're here with another senior at Middleburg High School, Savannah Kinsley, who's going to share her personal experiences in life as an emancipated minor. So, what does it mean to be legally emancipated? So, for me, legally emancipated means that I have no one that has any custody over me. So, for right now, I have what's called a legal guardianship because New York State doesn't classify emancipation. And I originally came from New Hampshire, which does classify emancipation. So, they kind of just blended it together through the legal system and it became a legal guardianship. At what age did you become emancipated? Um, I became emancipated at the age of 14, which was actually four years ago tomorrow. That's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, what led you to become emancipated? Well, um, what had happened was we had some family issues. My mom had left me when I was younger, and I was living with my dad, and he was having some personal issues, and I felt that the best environment for me would to be to leave. And I moved in with my grandparents in New Hampshire, and then about three or four months later, I moved to New York. How did you feel when it became official? Um, it felt weird. Like, I wanted to, like, be excited about it, but at the same time, it's such a sad thing to become emancipated. Um, so it, it was, like, a good thing for me, but, I mean, for other people, it's probably not such a good thing. <laughs> um, what were the biggest changes in your life after? Probably asking people for money, trying to connect with different people, and, like, you have to really utilize your resources. So, like, connecting with teachers, um, other people, friends parents basically so you have like another outlet to go to not just relying on yourself what's the most challenging part of being legally independent the most challenging part once you become emancipated you're basically on your own and you have to do a lot of stuff by yourself and like i kind of had to turn into an adult at a very young age so like making my own doctor's appointments and having to like go through that process of calling the doctor's offices and calling the dentist's offices and everything else how does it affect your financial aid for college my financial aid is actually, it affects it a lot. I get full boat for FAFSA um, and for TAP and Pell. So like their, their full that they give is about $5,000 a piece. So I have $5,000 from both state and federal. And plus I qualify for a bunch of federal grants that a lot of kids don't qualify for. Do you qualify for the Excelsior Scholarship Program? I do qualify for the Excelsior Scholarship Program because when I applied for college, since I am classified as an independent student, I didn't have to put down like my parents' tax information. I've had a job since I was roughly 16, so I put in my own tax return information. So that's what makes you qualify for those types of program. And since I am a student, I only make, I made under $4,000 because, you know, I was in school and stuff. But um, the Excelsior Program doesn't go up to like 100 thousand dollars or something like that yeah so since I make under a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> a year I definitely qualify for that how did becoming independent and essentially starting a new life affect your plans for the future moving to New York so many options like opened up to me like I met so many different types of people that I definitely would not have met in New Hampshire because Albany is such like such a big area that I didn't realize how many people I would I would meet just from like my friends living here their whole lives and like having family out here and so I actually found what I wanted to do um, through my boyfriend's mom because she works for a commercial company and I started like helping out and working like little, little stuff like little PA stuff and um, so that's actually what I found a passion for I really I really became like attached to it in a sort of, in a sort of sense and so I, without moving to New Hampshire, I don't think I would have wanted to know what I wanted to do in college. If you could give any advice to your younger self, what would it be? My advice to my younger self would be just keep, just keep going. It's going to be okay. Don't worry about it. Everything works out in the end. You find so many, so many people, like there's tutors at school, different people at school that have helped me through the process of like coming up with college stuff because when, <laughs> when I applied for college, to become classified as an independent student because that's what colleges call it. Um, there's like paperwork, I needed um, certificates, uh, um, authenticity, what, you know, and so on and so forth. This has been Rachel Coppolo for 518 Faces. Thanks again to Savannah Kinsley for sharing her experience with us and we'll see you next time.